Okay, cadet. So you've just fired up stationers for the first time, and you've landed on the moon. And you want to know what to do with the contents of your lander. You're in the right place. So in this video, what we're going to do is a really quick run through how you can use the contents of the lander to quickly build yourself some shelter to get started. So I've begun the game on the moon. Um, there's pros and cons of the moon. Um, there's no atmosphere, which means there's no storms or anything like that to worry about. Um, on the other hand, there's no atmosphere, so you can't suck gas out of it. However, um, we're going to do that for this. This is going to be a quick um, tutorial, really, on how to uh, use the contents of the lander to make that first base. So we're going to start with the frames, and I'm going to try and find an area where the height of the frames is, uh, is good against the height of the ground. Um, I don't want to have to do too much digging. That looks good there. Okay, now the other thing to think about, sun is rising that way, so that is going to be uh, the east and it's going to set over there. So um, we need to make sure that the base is lined up right for that because we're going to want to grow some plants in it. So we're going to throw down some frames really quickly. Um, whoops. Um, I advise generally that you don't use your jetpack too much too early because um, it'll be a while until you have the ability to refill it. However, I'm using it just now just to get this done quickly. Um, so I think this will be enough. Um, so that's you'll see it's three wide. That's very deliberate. Um, and um, then we've left some uh, space here. So we're going to this end six here is going to be enclosed to form the hab. We are going to build the airlock into here, so I'm going to move those frames up there. Um, and then we have some flat space out the front here where we can do some other building. Um, so let's get on with it. So um, iron sheets is the first thing we're going to need, and we'll need the welder. Um, whoops, and I'll throw it on the floor. Right, pick the welder up. Okay, turn that welder on. You can use O to do that quickly. and. Uh, there are two different ways you can weld these frames. You can use a single sheet and you get a see-through frame which you can walk on. So you'll see I can walk on this without falling through. Or you can use two sheets, in which case it won't be see-through and it will also be completely airtight. So for the ones in the hab, we will need to do that. Um, but for these, I just want a flat surface that I can build on. Um, you'll see there's some iron there. Um, later on, I may wish I hadn't blocked that in. However, um, right this end, so it will be in the hab, so we're going to close that in and we're going to do this quite quickly because I want to give you an idea of how quickly you can get a first shelter up um, and also if uh, you're new to the game then um, it'll give you a bit of an idea of how far you can get while you test it under the uh, the two hours you get uh, of playtime with Steam um, so um, you should be able to do everything I do in this video well within that get a bit of a, a feel for the actual gameplay. Now the um, controls, if you are new to the game, are a little bit different than you're probably used to in a lot of other games. Um, they at first do feel really clunky and I do see a lot of uh, new players complaining about them. What I'll say is that after a bit of playing it does become muscle memory um, and although you do sometimes still hit the wrong button, usually um, in my case because of uh, fat fingers rather than anything else um, you can quite quickly do what you want to do so try and persevere with that if you can um, you will find it will help um, and it will get better over time so you'll see I've rotated those walls and just dropped them at different angles one thing you'll notice with these walls is that um, when you place them down um, you can place them on the inside of the block, as I've done here, but you can also place them on the outside of the other block. So either is valid, either will be airtight. Um, and in fact, the top ones here I've actually put on the, uh, the bottom of the block above. Um, it just optically will look a little bit different. Um, so we're going to get those frames and seal that in. Makes more of a difference when you use more advanced walls. Um, these ones look fairly similar on both sides. Um, but you can see the inside is... Uh, does look slightly different um, and you can double layer them as well which is really useful if later on you need to adjust something and you need to take one of them off you can actually patch one on the outside um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the glass so you'll see we're quite quickly 
closing in this area here. Um, and it's good to do that because it's very easy to forget otherwise. Um, you can tell, obviously it's very difficult on the moon with the uh, black sky looking upwards, but you can tell when you look at these, when there's glass in them, because they have these lines on them. Um, the more advanced windows have hexagons, but the principle is the same. So I'm going to leave both of these in here. In fact, I'm going to leave all of these in here. Those blocks are going to get sealed up in a minute. However, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up um, the very basics of some um, power, um, because we're going to need to get power to um, the whole base. So I'm going to put down a, uh, a solar panel. Uh, I'm just trying to work out the best place to do that. Um, I think actually that uh, I don't want to put it too far away because we've got a limited supply of cable when we first start um, and we can't make any more. So I'm going to put that there. Um, we can't make any more until we've mined some um, copper. And I'm going to put a power controller down here which we're going to connect to it. That's going to effectively act as our battery in the short term. And we'll stick a second power controller inside the airlock as a backup. What I've forgotten to do is put a roof on the airlock. So let me quickly fix that because otherwise we're going to have a terrible time later on. Um, so again, I'm just you can do that with frames, um, or you can just do it with the, with walls. Um, walls will take up to 200 kilopascals of pressure difference between the inside and the outside. Um, let's put some glass on that panel. Uh, throw that down there. Uh, okay, so we're going to connect the solar panel to that uh, power controller and I will save the rest of that for a minute. I'm going to use the crowbar to open the power controller um, and that will reveal a slot into which we can place a battery which will be in one of these. There we go. So we're going to grab that battery at the moment. It's fully charged. We're going to throw that in there. Okay, that's all the power we've really got for the base at the moment. We've got one the same in our suit. Um, we can, if you hold down the Alt key, you can drag and drop. So we can actually lift and drop and switch them over like that. It gives me 100% in there. And then that one should be charging because the sun is still up. But you'll see with these flat panels, it's not generating a whole lot of power. It's only at 15% and it's going down as the sun sets. But, you know, at least it's doing something all of the time. Right, now the next thing we need to do um, is to set up the uh, machines. So um, let's do that. There is a solid generator. This will burn coal. Uh, I don't know why there's coal on the moon um, and Mars, but there is. Um, so I'm going to plonk that down here. It doesn't need any assembly. It just goes straight down. So we'll put some wire in there. If you put the wire cutters in the other hand while you're laying wire, you can connect it to existing connections like that. That means we've now got a backup if uh, we run out of power. Uh, and then I'm going to run the rest of the cable. Just uh, run it that far for now so you can see where we're going. OK, now we'll set up the um, arc furnace and the auto lathe. Um, so these are two other machines we need. The arc furnace is the most basic way of um, smelting ore. Um, and the um, auto lathe is the um, most uh, basic printer for printing items. Um, so we're going to need both of those. Um, and it's important that we get enough uh, capability to at least get them set up and powered. Um, because if we don't do that, um, anything else that we run out of, we'll, we will have a, a problem um, because we'll have no means of manufacturing anything. So I'm going to connect them up. And you'll notice I'm doing that before I've connected up most of the base. Um, and it is simply for that reason that if I run out of cable, um, it's most important that these machines are working. Um, because as long as these machines are working, I can make more cable. If they're not working, then I'll have to cut out the cable I've already laid. And I've cut that in too close. So let's go straight to wire cutters, snip that out. Um, and then uh, just rotate that with delete. And again, and straight using the mouse wheel just to switch between them. Whoops. And there we go. Um, if you double tap F, um, whatever's in your hand goes back onto the belt like that. So that's neat and tidy. Equally, we can close the suit um, with by pressing the number it's mapped to. On mine, that's mapped to number two. I think the default setting is actually number three. Um, I kind of learned the controls of this before uh, the glasses slot was introduced. So um, I've just remapped mine a little bit. Um, right. OK, so we had enough cable to do that. So what we're going to do now is we are going to um, go through here and pull out what we need for the airlock. Um, so um, we will need, we'll certainly need those pipes. Again, if you double tap F, it will go and 
in the case of something like that, it will go into your backpack, so it's gone into that spare slot there. Also, while I'm holding down Alt, um, I can drag that Atmosphere Analyzer circuit board, and it drops and plugs straight into the tablet, which has also got the advantage of giving me a bit more space. Uh, drag and drop, so I can drag and drop the doors in there. I know I'm going to need them. Um, frankly, I'm going to need everything in here um, at some point, so uh, let's just grab that and grab that. Uh, and this should be enough to get us started. So, um, oops. Um, so, E to toggle hands. Um, we're going to set the doors up. We're going to set them up with the uh, connections facing inwards because that will use the least amount of cable to uh, put together, which is important at this stage. Um, right, I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to uh, quickly drop that there and I'm going to weld this one solid. Okay, and again, get that out of the way. Right, so and then we're going to put the console right in the middle with the power facing down. Um, we are going to put the active vent in this top corner, but I'm going to, by pressing C, it will rotate. I'm going to rotate it like that so that the larger connection, the pipe connections at the top, and the power connections at the bottom. And the reason for that is I'm then going to take those pipes and I'm going to put a corner pipe in here and I'm going to put another corner pipe in here. Um, and in fact, I'm going to put one straight and one down. Now for the moment, those pipes aren't going to do anything. You can see the end is sealed. Really that just is going to act as a gas reservoir. So when we pump the air out of the airlock, it will just be stored in that pipe. But later on, we can put a passive vent there and it will actually vent it back into the hab. Um, obviously we don't want to do anything like that while the side of the hab's open. Right, um, so let's throw that back in there. Um, let's get that out of the way. Let's close the backpack. Um, so we need to grab the airlock circuit board and we need the um, data disk. Uh, and we need the sensors. Um, and that should get us started. Now what we haven't done yet is, is to construct that um, printer so I'm going to quickly come back and do that. So the printer we need uh, the welding torch and two iron sheets and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this now is I don't want to run out of cable or iron sheets so I've welded on first of all the iron sheets um, and now I need some um, you'll see it will now say it needs four cable coil um, so we put that in and that was the thing I was most concerned about running out of um, and um, from there it's also going to need the plastic sheets which are still on the lander so we'll come back and do that in a minute. The furnace you can see is, is up and running and ready and we could actually use that um, right now if we wanted to um, if we just flick that switch to power everything up. However we're not going to do that quite yet. What we are going to do though is we are going to throw everything on the floor. Um, I tend to be a bit messy while I'm building, but it kind of works for me. So we're going to fit a gas sensor in here. I'm going to put it down there. Um, now the cabling into this airlock um, we need to put. So I'm using C just to rotate through the possible position. So we're going to put one curve there. We are going to put a whoops, a T junction here and another T junction here, a curve whoops, facing the right way up here and a straight there. We're then going to put a cross piece here, a straight here, a straight here, a cross here, a straight Hydration critical. a corner, um, a T-junction, this will all make sense in a minute, I promise. And then we're going to run that up there. Now, um, what that means is this is going to connect to the data and the power ports of both doors. And it's also going to connect to all of this stuff up here. Um, so I grabbed the circuit board earlier on. So the airlock circuit board, we'll drop that in there. And then we need some glass just to close that up. So we're going to put the glass on there. Throw that glass down there. The data disk, we pick up there. We slot that into here. Obviously at the moment none of this power is connected, but we will need that just to program it. Um, so the next thing we are going to do is we're going to go and get the plastic sheets off the lander. Um, and we are going to weld the printer. And we're going to weld 
both of these sets of doors. And that's all we need the plastic sheets for. So I'm going to actually throw them inside and just get them out of the way. Right, these doors we'll need the uh, the glass sheets I've got here. But before we do that, right, all we need to finish the um, auto lathe is just a simple screwdriver. So we'll apply the screwdriver. That is now working. And if I again, if I flick that switch, power this up, um, that should now switch on. He said, uh, have I connected that? Yes, I have. Um, Right, so this slot here should now power up. That is powered. Oh, I've connected that to the data port, um, not to the power port, that's why. Um, so let's quickly remedy that just in time because I think I am going to run out of wire, um, which is why we build things super close together at the beginning. Right, there we go, so that's now working. Okay, now I've got six pieces of wire left. I've somehow got to get from there to there. But what I can't do is go through the corner of the door there. I can go through the top corner which is what I usually would do, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it with six pieces. So um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to put it through here, which is why I've left this frame unsealed. Now, the disadvantage of this is it means it's obviously not accessible if we need to fix anything later or if we overload the cable and it burns out. The advantage of it is it actually fits just and look at that we have literally got one cable left however we should now be able to power that up and that is working okay so that is that now we will take this here and we will close that frame up and i'll drop that there um, usually um, if i do run the cable in the top what i'll then do is put the other power controller um, on the inside something like that and then we can put a backup battery in as a um, emergency so that if you get trapped in the airlock you've still got power obviously that's kind of hard to do in here now because there's really nowhere to put it um, so we'll just drop that in there for now there's lots of other places we can use that later on um, the power controllers actually take a little bit of technology before you can build them um, but um, they are quite useful at the beginning um, so what am I doing? Um, I need to close in those doors next. Um, we've actually got everything we need off the lander to get started. Um, so I'm going to do that. Um, so we need the crowbar and we need, where did I throw the glass? It's probably in my backpack. There it is. Grab the glass. Okay, so we're going to um, go to the crowbar. We're going to construct that door and we're going to construct that door. and. Um, you can see these are already powered and that's because we've connected it um, and this is actually sealed in here now so um, as a little test I can turn on my jetpack and fly up and hit the ceiling it's always worth just double checking before we do anything drastic if I now turn this console on it's got the disk in so it's in programming mode right so what it needs to know is what components to connect where now for a an airlock it needs an active vent which we need to select. Luckily, there's only one, so it's that one. It needs two doors, an internal and an external, and it needs a gas sensor. So let's turn on the gas sensor. That's easy. Now the doors. Now we need to get these in the right order. So I'm going to guess that the first one is the external. So I click on it, and that's external, but it's not. And the way I can tell is that one is the one it's locked, because when you select it, it goes to locked. So that select it. If it's not the external one, there we are, that's the external one. And you'll see, since you've selected the external, um, it also then changes over to say interior. So we then select the interior, and then we can pull the disc out, and now this is fully functional. You don't need that disc again, except to reprogram other consoles. Um, it's now attempting to pressurize. Uh, of course, it's not gonna work because there's no gas in that pipe. So we'll cancel the pressurize, but it's trying to cycle us inside. There we go, so that is now working. And if we press cycle to exterior, it will now depressurize, which obviously takes zero time because there was no pressure in there to start with. So that's good. You can hear my character starting to uh, suffer from uh, thirst, but um, the good news is um, we have um, already got some water in our suit um, and there is more on the lander. However, um, in the interests of trying to uh, actually get to something vaguely habitable in the time available, we're going to go better than that. We are going to, there's a seeds in the organic supplies there. Actually, I'll just leave all these open. It's easier to see what's what. Um, however, um, we are going to use some of the devices in here um, in order to actually get things 
working. So um, the portable scrubber we won't need um, on the moon. Um, if you've got a planet where you've got toxins, which is marked as X in the atmosphere, um, then you will need to get that into the hab. Um, but you will not need to do that on the moon uh, and you can get away with it on Mars as well. We might need the air conditioner because it might get a bit hot in there and we will definitely need the hydroponics. The air conditioner will need a battery to, oops, um, press E to change hands. The air conditioner will need a battery, so let's grab that. So let's go ahead and um, take them in. Now what I usually do when I'm taking things into the base like this is I just throw them on the floor in the airlock um, to save constantly cycling the airlock through um, because we're coming back for some more stuff. So um, we are going to, we will need that gas tank in a moment as well. Um, we are going to um, grab the uh, water because we're going to need that for the hydroponics. I need the jetpack, I think, to reach that because of the angle the land is on. Um, and uh, I think that's probably all for now on there. Um, so obviously we've got some spare stuff there. There's a, there's a battery, which obviously if you're using the uh, portable scrubber you'll need, but otherwise it's spare. There's a spare wrench, two um, uh, rolls of duct tape. You'll need them if you've got storms and things get damaged. In this one, there's a labeler, a tracking beacon, an advanced airlock circuit board if you want to make a more fancy um, airlock, although actually you won't have the stuff to do it immediately, and some paint. Uh, paint actually, again, something that takes a little while before you can make. So useful for early uh, marking of things and also road flares which uh, just light the area up so if you are, are going away from base and you like to get lost then um, they just light up like that um, I'm just gonna throw that away in this one though we've got um, some equipment that we're going to need so we are actually going to want um, tables um, and the microwave um, because we're gonna want to take them inside um, not that we've got enough cable um, immediately to connect that, um, but we are going to want them. So let's come inside um, and land. Um, I am going to just quickly have a drink of water um, because my health is falling. So we'd get that into my hand and hold down the right click button until I consume the water. And you'll see my thirst has gone up to 100 at the bottom and that's fine. And my health should start to recharge. So that's drunk two thirds of that bottle of water. You do start with uh, a few bottles on the lander as well. Um, Right, so let's drop the, the large canister of water. Um, so just for comparison, you can't drink directly from that. Um, the water bottles you can drink from, that's the size that they are, right? So um, you need a water bottle filler to uh, to fill up the smaller bottles, uh, which you can make um, at the uh, uh, the machines. Um, so, um, we have now got, uh, there's, there's equipment on here, there's spare food and spare water. Um, you may or may not need them depending on your hunger and thirst settings. There is a ground penetrating radar that you can use to find ores under the ground. Um, there's a locker kit which we'll take um, because that's useful just to set up. Um, and there is a circuit board that you can put into your tablet if you're using the ground penetrating radar and that's how you visualize where the ore is. As I say, green one has got seeds. Um, there's a battery charger on here. Um, we haven't actually really got enough cable to make good use of it, but I'll, I'll show you how it connects. I think we've just about got space to squeeze it on here. Uh, it's not the nicest positioning, but if I put that there, um, and then I think, yes, we can just about do this, um, although I'm going to have to um, throw the lockers in there. Uh, the longer you hold down Q4, the harder you throw. Um, so let's grab the wire cutters so that I can connect it to this and then switch to the cable and put straight and that will build that into a junction there. So then that's connected and um, we turn that on. We can put batteries in there and it will charge them. The other way we can charge batteries is we have a portable solar panel in our backpack, which you can also put a charger into. Um, if you're on Mars, be careful. If there's a storm, that can blow away. It can also get damaged. Um, obviously, on the moon, that is not an issue. Um, but then all you do is um, let's close all those windows. Is if I grab a battery, um, then what you do is you just put it into the middle there. Um, similarly, into there. If you select the outside there, it will pick up. You just drop it with Q, and it will redeploy. So we'll leave that there for now. Um, useful as a, a backup way of getting some power. Now um, we're going to uh, go into the hab in a minute but before we do I'm going to bring this big air tank off the lander. Um, so we use the wrench for that and if you then uh, 
look at that when you've got the wrench it can disconnect you hold it down it'll disconnect it does tend to fly a bit as you can see um, and then it's got handles around the middle here you can pick it up by um, just click once to pick it up but just beware if you're in a confined space um, they're a little bit prone to uh, going flying um, and, and it can be a bit dangerous so um, he says dropping it in a confined space okay so there we go so we're now going to cycle inside obviously there's nothing to pressurize so i'm going to cancel that um, and then we're going to come straight inside here uh, pick up and, and just bring all of these things inside um, and grab that whoops you see what i mean about it going flying um, you have to be a bit careful sometimes it can damage your suit um, well that's um, going all over the place if you need to refill your oxygen at any time um, it will last quite a long time but you will see um, it is on here it's I've got 5478 kilopascals in there it's not going to run out for a while to be honest um, these filters will probably run out before the first tank of oxygen but if you do ever need to um, what you can do I'll put it in my hand to do it critical. is you can apply the air tank to the uh, yellow and black area there and that will refill it to whatever pressure is in the big tank um, just don't forget when you've done that you see it's now 7500 to put it back in your suit or you will suffocate um, similarly if you need to empty the waste tank which will waste become tank, dioxide critical. if you put it in your hand um, you can either press R or you can um, click on it and then there's an open option and if you do that it will then equalize the contents and the pressure which at the moment is a hard vacuum with what's outside um, and put that in there um, and we can see there should now be some carbon dioxide actually inside here so if I pull this and you'll remember I put the atmosphere uh, circuit board in there and turn that on you'll see actually this is the contents that's come out of um, my welder um, and my um, uh, tank that I just emptied into um, the, the atmosphere in here it's only 139 pascals it's very very low pressure but of what's there 90 percent of it is carbon dioxide and a few traces of other things x is pollutant um, in large quantities well even quite small quantities it will kill your plants however um, that is not going to be an issue because once we pressurize this that is going to be a very tiny percentage so um, we'll put that away um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this tank and I'm just going to drop it over here so it's not in the way um, you can see the valve on the back I'm going to increase this valve and I'm going to turn this up obviously we don't want this too high I'm going to set it to um, it wants to go to 100 um, is, is normal atmosphere so I'm going to do that and let that fill um, but obviously what we need to be aware of is you can see it's emptying the tank so if we need to refill our oxygen cylinder that obviously is much more difficult however you can see the um, particle effects it fills up and if you look in the bottom right hand corner you can see the external pressure is going up nicely it's now 54 kilopascals it's in the white zone which is safe I could actually open my helmet and be fine now at this stage um, there is no um, downside of having a pure oxygen atmosphere except for the fact that it is a fire hazard um, so be aware of that don't do any welding um, once you've got it set up um, so I'm going to get this portable air conditioner and I'm going to put that in my hand and then if I hold right click it will construct that and then throw it on the floor in a very nice way there um, and I'm going to construct these lockers and lockers have got two settings a small or if you put two of them in your hand a large so I'm going to use the large part there somewhere to tidy up I'm going to grab the battery and put it into the air conditioner and the air conditioner basically can be set to hot or cold um, and we just turn it on or off um, it's landed facing backwards basically which is unfortunate um, we can pick it up and move it by these handles um, I'm not going to bother at this stage um, but um, it will fill up if it's not connected to anything so um, it can only process a certain amount of um, atmosphere before it's full um, right I'm going to do the same with the portable hydroponics I pick it up hold right click to construct it throws it down and then I'm going to pick up the water canister and plug it into that hole there that is now ready to receive plants it's got water in there um, because this starts with water um, the t air pressure in here is now safe and actually it's also 20 degrees so Tango, the uh, pressure and temperature is safe so what we can now do if we cycle back to the exterior you'll see this will take longer this time as the pressure goes down and then opens and we can go to the lander we can grab so seeds will not decay um, plants once um, you pick them or food once you pick it will decay 
Um, so we'll go uh, proper Mark Watney and we will grab some potatoes. Um, but for some variation, uh, let's grow some uh, pumpkins. Um, the mushrooms um, and there's eggs in there will decay. If you want to save them, you will need to build yourself a fridge, but uh, that will require mining and using the auto lathe. Um, however, in the meantime, let's go back inside. Let's get some plants planted and you'll see that 30 minutes in, um, we have got ourselves some plants growing in a pressurized um, hab, which um, is safe to use. I'm gonna just cancel the last little bit of that so let's plant some pumpkins in that side let's plant some potatoes in that side then let's have a quick tidy up and put these things away in here there we go oops close that okay there we go so that is uh, the hab basically running uh, at the moment it's complaining that the lighting's unfavorable that's because it's night time once the sun comes up this is why we've built the windows on the east and the west uh, i'm not sure which is which but east and west and uh, a glass roof rather than sealing it in because um, we can use the sunlight um, for that if you really want to build underground the good news is later on you can do that um, because you can build a grow light but you do not have anything you need to do that when you start so we're going to now go back outside um, that is basically how to to use the contents of the lander to build a base in 30 minutes roughly um, you'll see there's still some stuff on there so there's more seeds um, and um, there are some other bits and pieces there's a pipe valve there that we didn't need to use uh, as I say duct tape in case of a problem there's more frames left so actually um, we could extend the uh, area somewhat don't lay them all down at the beginning though um, because um, you will not have enough iron sheets and although I just just put a few away in that locker it was um, less than five so um, you will not have enough sheets if you lay all the frames down at the beginning do not do that um, you should lay down no more than 20 which is um, what I have done here and that includes the two at the top there so six by three 18 on the bottom with one sheet welded onto the nine at this end um, two sheets welded on at that end um, and then two frames one there one there with two sheets welded on that should be where you start and you'll see I've been very frugal with where I've put things I've kept everything very close together um, but I've managed to connect all the basic systems um, so the next thing really that you would be going on to do and I'm not going to go for a full playthrough here but the next thing you'd be going on to do would be um, to go mining so I will just quickly show you the mining um, and uh, we'll grab the mining drill and um, we can see in fact that there was some iron there um, I might even be able to get at it I don't know yes I did um, and you can see it's gone into my belt I've got a mod turned on at the moment that just is a, a, a um, much larger uh, yield on mining and I've done that just so that I can uh, very quickly uh, demo this um, but uh, if that was the normal setting on the game you'd have probably got five then or 50 um, so 50 is the largest stack you can have of ore by the way um, so we just turn this on there we place the ore in there we press the activate button you'll see it heats up it is actually emitting some gas um, you can test that if you stand here with this and you can see um, although there's no pressure there if you stand right next to it here you can see some co2 coming off uh, mostly co2 and uh, and pollutant coming off at uh, 62 degrees c um, so that is that um, however um, that will smelt uh, you can see the progress if you hover over here so it's got uh, it's about 20 left to go um, and then that will drop out and we can load it into there um, and that's the basic mechanic by which we get started um, similarly um, if you um, find and mine some coal which I can't immediately see now um, anywhere near to the base um, not least because it's night time there's some um, you can feed that into the solid generator so again to so say that you know what to do if the power runs out on you um, I will grab that um, and we will come back be careful not to get lost um, again later in the game you can build beacons and things there is a battery powered beacon in the lander um, it's frankly fairly useless because what I normally find is I turn it on go away from base and then the battery runs out and uh, I still can't find my way home anyway uh, as far as the solid generator goes if you insert coal into there you'll see it just sits there um, however if you flip the switch 
it turns on. If there's an atmosphere, you'll hear it. Obviously, in a vacuum, you won't. That is generating power, and you can tell that this is charging because this is flashing blue and green. Uh, if I now turn this off, it's discharging. It's flashing blue and red. Um, so, and that battery, if you need to see how charged it is, if you pull it out, it's 80%. Um, there we go. So, you see the iron uh, that we left smelting here once the stack was finished just fell out. So, we just pick that up, we drop that in there. You'll see that just goes through. And you can hover over this green panel here to see the contents 50G iron. Turn that on, um, and then you can use that to find what you're looking for. So, there's a number of things that you can make on the printer right away. One of the early things you'll want to do is to make both an electronics printer and a hydraulic pipe bender because those are the other base machines that you will need to make things for your base. So do those early. The other thing is that obviously at this point we have run out of cable. So cable coil um, becomes important. Obviously that requires copper. Um, and um, if we want to, we can make more iron sheets here, which will allow us, um, which we can do with the iron we've got. That will allow us if we wanted to, to then use the rest of those frames. Um, so um, you can also uh, scroll through like this. This is a bit of a slow way to do it. Um, However, um, if we come back to uh, where we started, um, you can see if we hover over that, build iron sheets, press the green button to build. Um, one quick little tip, if it's building like this, you'll see it just keeps building and keeps building and keeps building. If you want it to finish Vibration after the um, current item that it's making, if you press the next or the back arrow, you'll see it just finishes that one and then stops. Um, which is good because otherwise you can very quickly burn through all of your iron. Um, and the other thing I recommend is always turn your equipment off when you've finished using it um, because you have very limited power capabilities at the beginning. Power will be your first challenge. You will need more solar panels than this to run even a base this size sustainably. Um, and bear in mind the battery in our suit here is already uh, down to 27%. So um, even if we switch that out here, um, that's only at 68%. So you can see power is a, an early problem. The solid generator will help you with that um, because it will allow you to convert coal into power, but it's quite tedious. You have to spend a lot of time mining and feeding it in there. Um, and also, if you leave that running, once that battery goes to 100%, you're just burning coal really for no benefit. So um, you need to keep an eye on it and keep turning it on and off. Again, later on, you can build electronics to do that for you. But for now, um, it's a bit painful. So my advice would be, if you're on a planet where there is uh, adequate sunlight, it would be to build um, several more of these uh, basic solar panels as early as you can. Um, if you have four or five of them, um, it's probably enough to get started. Um, but really what you want is once you've got the um, electronics printer, you want the um, next type of solar panel up, which can be angled towards the sun. And again, later in the game, you can build, and actually quite early in the game, you can build electronics to make it track the sun automatically. So you can see we've got a few things left on the lander here um, that you can um, either use to extend the base, um, more seeds that you can grow later on, um, equipment that you can use for mining and some food and drink, um, or to be honest with you, um, later on you can just build a recycler and throw all those things in it and chew it up for the raw materials. So that in just under 40 minutes is a quick uh, demo on how to get up and running in stationers to get your first basic base working, to do your first smelting and to get your first plants hopefully starting to grow, um, although um, it is night time. So, um, oops, I cancelled that pressurise so it very quickly opened. Um, so it is still dark, so we haven't actually got any uh, plants that have started to grow. You're going to have to just trust me that when the sun comes up, they're going to be very happy in here and they will start growing nicely. Um, on the moon, you can get a bit of an idea of where we're at, at in terms of night and day by looking at the um, sunlight on the Earth. Um, the angle of that tells me that the sun is not too far below the horizon and will be coming up really quite soon. Um, so that is a very quick introduction to the first, there we go, there comes the sun now and in fact quite quickly let's just give it a second to see that this is no longer saying unfavorable lighting, there we go, and the plants are starting to grow. So there we are, proof that it works. Um, 
they've taken some damage but uh, they will recover and they will grow perfectly well from there and in fact you can see the health on them is going up so that is that that is the first uh, game day of stationers the first roughly 40 minutes um, we've got a base and um, it's pressurized and there's some food growing and the basic machines are all built so that is it that is all I am going to cover in this video. As I say, it is just the basics of getting started. I hope you find it useful. Um, I hope you uh, buy and try Stationeers and, and enjoy playing it as much as I do. If you found this interesting, you can check out my other videos as well. Uh, I have a playthrough on Mars, um, which you may find some useful tips on how to take things a bit further.